possibilities. Spring emerges in all ways, hearts, minds, and nature. Yeah, man, spring is here. It's an energy. Make it useful. Let you be spring in your community. Let your buds open. Be the flower that brings beauty and grand aroma to all. Fragrance is a frequency. Be pleasant in your frequency. In that, you will change the world. And isn't that our job right now? In this date of the week of March 27th, number four is the I Ching hexagram for this week. Number four, Meng, without experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Above is Ken. The mountain firm rooted, nothing to lose. Below is Khan, the water flowing fast. Possible danger, yeah. Pay attention, be awake. <clears throat> Flat, fast flowing water, man. It could be dangerous, but you can also take a great ride, yeah. The wisdom, the tree is bearing fruit. What has been nurtured has taken root. The fruit is not yet ripe. Take of the fruit now and you will fall ill. Yeah, man. That's like eating cookie dough. You know, you gotta wait till it's done. In stillness, you will hear the voice of spirit calling you to greatness. By listening with trust, you can be led to a grand situation. Institute patience now. Moving without consummate consideration now would be folly. And all you've looked at, looked for, will fall away. Don't let your dreams fall away because you move too fast. You're feeling the power of potential. This is good. It is the root of passion. And it's passion that is the elixir that has in the past taken you to balance and success. The ego can create a strong obstacle by telling you to grab onto the situation or the opportunity before it's too late. Watch out, that's the ego's trick, telling you to pick the low-hanging fruit before it's ripe and before it's edible. If you move too quickly into the core of your situation at this point, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> You'll find that you do not have the information and the capacity to deal with energy such as this. What is stirring in you has the depth of many layers. Be aware that some are hidden. Your benefit now is to come to stillness. Come to stillness. Where you intuitively gain the knowledge necessary about the essence of the situation. Before you commit to entering into the flow, do not try to make it appear that you know what you do or you do not do. This would be folly if you try to make it appear that you do know. And this would create obstacles that may and would likely be imp impossible to overcome in this cycle. The stillness of the mountain. Yeah. You see, the mountain is not still at all. Water flows from the mountain. Trees grow. Birds fly. All sentient beings are nurtured. This is a symbolic spring of youthful beginnings and experiences. A, youth, a youthful attitude now brings success without bounds. Though you're feeling the excitement of the pending project or the relationship you're, that's coming your way or you just got involved in, you're advised to wait and be sure you have all thoughts, all emotions and skills in full alignment, in alignment with the truth and to see that your actions will serve not only you, but also the greater good. This is where you will be able to assert and claim your magic. You are in a great position, but you must accept 
that in this situation, you know very little about how to proceed, and that's all right. Revel in the fact that you're a beginner. Seek the information, seek the teacher, seek the guide who can mentor you into this next stage of abundance, this next stage of love. Consider the advice that you get, that you pick up wherever you have to go for it, to a person, a ancient reading, a truth that you know to be true. And then move into the quiet of your heart. The blessing here is you are again the student. Accept and embrace that place. The spring emerges through the rock on the mountain. This is the new showing itself. Be steady and clear. Observe and open your mind and heart. Be without fear or judgment. Yeah. When you find yourself being judgmental, even if it's inside your mind just for a second, really let it go. Let it go. Judgment puts you in a position of weakness. Acceptance and compassion brings you to a place of strength. Shoshin. Shoshin is a term in Zen meaning beginner's mind. It refers to cultivating an attitude of openness, eagerness, and lack of preconceptions when studying a subject or a new situation you wish to be in harmony with, just as a beginner in that subject would at that time. Even if you are at an advanced level, take yourself to the beginner's mind. Move too fast now and you'll fall impotent, un unable to perform, and this will leave you frustrated, and the ego will beat you down, telling you, you are not enough. <clears throat> You've heard that one, huh? This would stop you in your motion towards completion and greatness. Being of the mind of the young student, the attitude of the beginner will serve you well. Be as still and calm as the mountain now, and allow the coming flow of knowledge and energy that is coming to you, found it, and where it is, lies in humility. The knowledge you need will at first be like a little slow moving spring, just dripping water. With care, confidence, and integrity, this gentle flow will soon become a magnificent flowing river. One that carries your dreams and your love and abundance to the shores of your completion and satisfaction. Remember satisfaction? Yeah, just don't move too fast. It'll come in this way. You see, you're going to fill the gaps in your knowledge. And you will be allowed to move to a peaceful and joyous success. And it is here that you will find the abundance and the love and the peace of mind that you've longed for. Go to the teacher you trust. Offer alms of respect and gratitude. This may be an elder in the tribe, a friend, or the inner voice of wisdom reached in the silence of your quiet mind. Your quiet mind in practice, your quiet mind in meditation. Have your practice enhanced at this time. You see, each of us has unseen teachers. These teachers are wise and patient and kind. You're now at the place where you find that you have the possibility to hear their voices and feel their compassion and love. So the question comes, what do I do to connect? Yeah. The answer really is easy. Be patient, compassionate, and kind each day. And each day would be in wonder as the sun rises and sets. Really, try it. Go to the sunset. It, it, it will blow your mind. Even if it has to go behind buildings or you know, <clears throat> behind a mountain far away. Just get into it. It is the end and the beginning at that moment. State that you're grateful for another day when you awaken and when you see the beauty of nature. Be in gratitude. When you hear the night birds sing, be in gratitude. Strive to be as a child whose innocence is in awe of all that is new. As a child, when you first hear an airplane flying overhead, you stop in amazement. It seems to linger in the sky above. 
You looked up and you watched as it made its way slowly across your field of vision until it was gone. Then you became accustomed to airplanes, seeing them, hearing them, and you were complacent as other airplanes made their way across your sky. And then you hardly noticed them. But then a helicopter came and it blew your mind. And then you were in wonderment again. This pattern repeats and repeats and repeats and complacency once again takes the place of wonder. <clears throat> Don't let it. Remember all those many years ago when you would watch bees and ants and be fully engaged with no sense of time? Go into that place. Shed the cloak of complacency and see the wonder around you. Share your visions and feelings with those around you with no fear of embarrassment or shame or judgment. I mean, can you imagine calling an associate and say, Hey, have you watched the bees on the flowers? Come with me. Let's watch for a minute. Huh? <laughs> I know. Open minds. Don't be afraid. When you're young, it would seem that summer would never come. And a year was such a long time. And then, as we become older, a year is just a moment. And our youth <laughs> seems to have slipped away. But it's, it hasn't. All that's happened is you become sophisticated and complacent, thinking that you know so much. My dear friends... We don't know anything. Really, we don't. I mean, we have experience and we see it, but knowledge is fleeting. The benefit now would be to teach what you know. Teach what you know and listen. Make way for the new. Empty the cup. Give your knowledge away. Maybe teach a class. Uh, write a letter of encouragement to someone you know and care for. Not an email, but if they're in the same country, try, try the snail mail. Write a letter. Handwrite it if you can. Take the time to nurture. By doing this, it's a path to freedom of thought and consciousness and spirituality. You know, I'm not against texting or email. It's nice and it's efficient, but takes you away from the place of contemplation and truly loving and reaching out. For this week, this hexagram comes to help you to return to the state of the child in wonderment of the new. Be still and learn. Be still and listen as you then become the mentor and you become the teacher. Dignity Integrity, compassion, and kindness are your allies. There's an adventure before you. And your dignity and your integrity and your compassion and your kindness are your friends as you move forward. You're coming to know the unknowable, the hidden truth that is deep within you. You are both student and teacher. And accepting this with a child's enthusiasm and a child's vision you will remove obstacles that have been blocking your way toward what waits for you in abundance, love, and spirit. You become the innocent. Come to know the voice of your heart. As you trust the voice of your heart, your inner knowing, your flow will be like that water that flows from the mountain, the water that has been made full by the spring rains. In complacency, you become dull to the love around you. Listen to that again. When you become complacent, you become dull to the love around you, and this causes loneliness and frustration. In your relationships, your friendships, your projects, your career, or in your own inner journey of spiritual evolution, it's now of great benefit to refresh your knowledge and your attitudes, change the way you think. You know, you can be in a relationship, you can be in a crowded room, but you still feel alone. Lonely. Reach out. More knowledge. You won't be so lonely as you bring more spirit, more passion into your life. You must learn new ways and think in a new way about how things are showing in your life and about how things work. Take a look at how you thought things work, and as you look through it, you'll see they're not quite what you thought. They're even deeper and even more grand, filled with 
glorious details. You know, the details of how a hive of bees actually makes honey, right? Or how the ants build their caves and houses. Take time and quiet the ego. Move into your inner knowing. Don't be a know-it-all, man. Just, just trust your intuitive force. That will not disappoint you. When you've come to the realization that you do not have enough knowledge to proceed, something wonderful will happen. You become the student again, the beginner who's filled with wondering and wonderment. Recall what brought you joy and what you did for fun as a child and do it now. Skip down the lane, play with clay, steal a kiss, do finger painting. Uh, I'm trying to do the kissing and finger painting at the same time. Whatever it is, reignite your innocence and sense of wonder. If you had trauma as a child around trust or love, you got to accept that it happened. Write about it, process it, and let it go. Find a skilled teacher or a friend or somebody who's been through it to talk to and move through it. As you move into a different pool of conscious activity, one that is joyous and one that's filled with gratitude, by having gratitude, you do away with any negative thoughts. So if you're feeling depressed, negative, angry, judgmental, just go into gratitude about your life. But the things you have, the people you have, your body, your mind, your spirit, your eyes, anything. But be grateful that you're alive, that you woke up this morning. And then all negativity disappears. Discard the old and open to new ways of being and doing. In the process, be patient and be kind and be compassionate with yourself and others as you begin learning new patterns. Observe the actions of happy children and bring that back into your life by following the advice and vision of this hexagram. Your frustrations will dissipate and you will feel the exhilaration of youth no matter what your age. Listen to a schoolyard in the distance you hear the kids screaming at each other and yelling, and this is joy. <clears throat> They're feeling it, you know, you too. It's passion. You know, these kids feel passion just running from one side of the play yard to the other to see their friend. Go into passion. The result of all of this will be love. It'll be a process. It'll be a lubricant to keep you in the knowing of your heart. Listen, let go, and return to your heart. We are in revolutionary times where the revolution is in spirit, and spirit is the companion of love. Feel love, be love, and you will return to the knowing of the bubbling well of youthful enthusiasm tempered by a clear and meditative mind. You are the one that you have been waiting for. That's what the Hopi elders say, man. That we are the ones we've been waiting for. Don't look outside ourselves, yourself. Just be that one. Be love and teach peace. That's the deal and that's the idea. I get letters, um, I emails. I wish I got letters. <laughs> I get emails every week about people who wonder if I do private uh, sessions or readings, and I do. Um, I work on Skype or telephone, or if you can get to Tulum, I work in person. But it's just the same. There is no distance. There is nothing that gets in the way of us connecting. So if you're feeling that you would like to have a private session with me, you can write me through this um, uh, website. Uh, you, you'd address it to, and we'll put it in the, um, in the email today, that uh, you address it to Vanessa at BobbyKlein.com. And she does all my appointments, and we can work that out. Also, I'm going to be having a um, bi-weekly uh, class, a uh, webinar, uh, covering a lot what we talk about, a lot of what's going on in the world. And um, I'll let you know more about that. Those of you that might be interested, let us know. These are wonderful times, really. They're trying, but, man, the scabs have been pulled off, and it's raw right now. We're all feeling it. So, be the love that you desire, okay? Be the love that you desire. 
have the intelligence that you have and use it. And mostly, go to your passion. Go to your bliss. Go to your passion. Go to your bliss. Have a great week. Namaste, my sisters. Namaste, my brothers. In La Kesha Lakin. I am the other you. And yeah, I like it that way. I send you love here from the 20th parallel. I encourage you to reach out with passion to those around you and to recognize the love that is there and embrace it. Dance, sing, and be joyous. In La Kesha Lakin, I am the other you. And I like it that way. Namaste. Namaste.